Hello Hi. everyone and welcome to another episode of Hangout with ST. She is Alyssa. And he is Harianto. And Hangout with ST is a weekly show where we bring you top stories of the week. Anything that is local to everything that's happening around, around the world. world. And this week is episode 78. And you are back. I'm back, yeah. How was your... Hey, last week, yeah. you keep saying that I can be replaced, you know, can replace me. Oh, wow. wow. I trust her. Eh. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. But hey, I'm happy that you're back. So what did you do last week? I had dinner, I had dinner, that's why I didn't watch the show. Oh, right? no wonder. That's why we didn't see you at all. Yeah, even my dad called me, okay, you're not on the show. <laughs> ah. All that, I'm, I'm on leave, that's why. <laughs> so your dad doesn't even know that you're on leave? No. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no. But more importantly, she is back this week and uh, it's so nice to, to have you back. Lah. Oh, I'm happy. I'm glad to be back too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming to you live from the Straits Times newsroom. So remember to share your comments, uh, partake in our conversation. And just say hello, right? Really? Uh, and uh, in fact, last week, Alyssa, you received a special gift. I did. Oh gosh, you just yes. reminded me. I forgot. I, mm. I still have the flowers. It's yeah. on my desk. Uh, yeah. Someone uh, sent me roses. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was very sweet. I wanted to put it here. I forgot. So sorry. But oh. thank you so much for sending me the flowers. Yeah. So she got that. Uh, so do, you know, just uh, send us stuff, I guess. Yeah, if you want. Send her to something too, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, think you'll be lonely. But more importantly, if let's say you want to get in touch with us, uh, you can also, you know, get in touch with us via our email and our Instagram. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Last week, we had a giveaway, actually, a ticket mm. giveaway for, for Hosen Leong's uh, show. Thank you to everyone who participated and congratulations uh, to our two winners mm -hmm. uh, to the show. Mm. Mm. Well, as always, we are coming to you live on the Street Science Newsroom, so do leave your comments and we will read it later during the show. Yeah, I've said that, but... I'll say it again because I was supposed to say it. <laughs> okay, so this week, we're going to talk about... We have a beauty pageant winner on yeah. our show. I know, right? You yeah. Know, I, I, I feel very nervous talking to her because she's so graceful. I know, and then someone yeah. we met her while holding bags on McDonald's. <laughs> they were like, oh, uh, hi. Oh, no, yeah, McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, uh, we'll be talking to a doctor, right? A respiratory mm -hmm. doctor on the ef uh, effects of vaping. Mm. Mm. And also the side effects of nicotine. Exactly. And then we will move on to a new segment, which is our feel good mo uh, segment, where we share one feel good story of the week. Mm. Right, something that is inspiring, something that is, you know, just all around uplifting. Mm. Mm. Because the world can be a very dark place. And then also last but not least, we have our Facebook face off, which uh do you win last week? No, Renee. Wow. Renee wow. won, yeah. Wow. One for wow. the females. Yes. Yeah, female empowerment. Nice. Okay, let's see. Let's say hello to people. People are saying audio please. Uh is our audio alright? Hmm. Let us know, right? Uh we have Rajesh uh says audio please. Excellent. And then Stephen Roberts already said, I think the title should read Miss Universe Singapore. Mm. Oh wow, it's a compliment. Wow. It's a compliment to our... Oh, oh I, can't, I can't read all the other comments. Oh, mm, it's okay. Really. Sometimes you re I don't get the comments yeah, you get and then correct. you don't get the comments I yeah, get. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, Hing Lincoln has uh, hearts and uh, stars. Oh, there's Lisa and that says good. Yeah, so make sure that you let all your friends and family members know that we are online and of course partake in our conversation. And just mm. say hi. Okay. Mm. Mm. Right, so Yan, have you ever thought of joining a beauty pageant? <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to start this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got, I yes. got it that far. Okay, let, let's do this again. No, have no, you no, no. Have ever thought of joining a beauty pageant? No, because oh. I don't have the confidence. Okay. Uh, no, okay. Why are you so surprised, ah? No, lah, I mean. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, to answer your question, if I were a girl, I would have actually wanted to join a beauty pageant. Why? Really? Because. There's Ben Han, you know. Oh, cannot lah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so likewise, man. Right, yeah. I, I don't know, yeah, all this beauty pageants, I think it's, it, it is something that uh, I've, I've always wanted to, but I've never had the guts to do it. Simply because, you know, uh, one thing with beauty pageants is that they, they teach, I don't know, they just teach you to be graceful, they teach you to carry yourself and good presentation skills. Right, mm. and I think these are very important to create a good impression to people. Mm. And I think mm. most importantly, learning how to walk in heels for the women, because I women. can't walk in heels properly. Exactly. Maybe I should join. Huh? Maybe you should join. Yeah, you should. I should. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I should. Right. So our mm. beauty pageant winner, Mrs. Singapore Universe, is not quite the run-of-the-mill beauty queen. So mm. Mrs. Lee Min Hua, she's 32, and she runs a vegetable wholesale and import business with her yep. husband of six years. Yep, okay, my iPad, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> now, the mother of two initially did not intend to 
enter a pageant. Now, she was taking her four-year-old daughter to a child beauty pageant audition when she was approached to audition for a pageant for married women. Now, her husband was definitely supportive of that as well. Mm, mm. Of course, it's not for vanity. It's not just for the sake of getting a crown and walking on stage in front of people. She wanted to do more because of a personal unfortunate experience that happened and she will share more because we are honoured to have her on the show. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome our beauty queen, Mrs. Lee Minghua, who is accompanied by the organiser of the uh, pageant <laughs> as well, uh, Miss Angela Tay. Wow. And this is her daughter, Peyan. Peyan, can say hi to anybody? This camera here? Mm. This one, this one here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, there you go. Hello. She says she wants to sing a song, so maybe later if she feels comfortable, <laughs> maybe she might sing a song for everybody, okay? <laughs> right. So, Mrs. Song. Lee. Okay. Yes. Mm. Uh, maybe you want to share with all of us, how do you even get started uh, with the pageant? Okay, so initially I was taking Peyton to a child pageant organised also by ERM and our national director, Angela. And um, Angela said, oh wow, um, you should come join audition for our Mrs. Singapore. And I thought, okay, this sounds good, but I'm not sure whether I'm up for it. Mm -hmm. So a few years back in, back in 2013, I did uh, audition for Miss Universe Singapore mm. and at that time I was about to get married so um, kind of not gonna pull, uh, put back my plan so I mm. decided uh, to to uh, not continue with the journey mm, mm. so now that my children are actually slightly older and more independent I decided uh, with my husband's encouragement of course to mm. go ahead with this and give it a shot mm. yeah and here I am today and mm. I'm so grateful to mm. Angela and of course ERM Marketing. Yeah, and you know, uh, Mrs. Lee, we just want to understand how was the experience like joining uh, the pageant, you know, how was training like? Because um, earlier on when we were when we had the chat, you said that Angela is the queen maker yeah, <laughs> and she taught maker. you how to be a queen. <laughs> Tell us more about the whole experience. No. Okay, yeah. so uh, I think the transformation in me was quite huge. Mm. Uh, that being said, Angela is the queen maker. She has made a lot of us ladies look super good. And mm. we have, like, you know how we put it, you know, we go to the market, maybe in our flip flops and things like that. We don't look very fabulous. At least now we, we know how to look presentable. Mm. And of course, neat to be neat. And in Singapore, a lot of us, we tend to be a little bit sloppy without dressing, maybe because of the weather. Mm. But Angela has taught us to actually Look, look nice and of course it, in order to represent our country I think this is actually very important mm. Mm. Yeah. Now Angela, you are a beauty pageant uh, alumni yourself you've, <laughs> You said that you've been joining it since you were 17 until you were 32 Maybe you can share more about that and why you started Yes, um, of course it's every girl's dream to wear a tiara mm. and also during our time to become um, maybe an artist um, the first platform is to join the beauty pageant during mm. our Open time. Your hands. Yeah, mm. and that was many, many years ago before mm. even the social media started. Mm. Yeah, so uh, if you want to be a celebrity or an artist or something like that, you have to join a pageant and be scouted there. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was younger, I was a model also, yeah. and then I joined all kinds of pageant. You mm. name it, I was there. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 17 year old, I started my very yeah. first pageant. Of course, I didn't win, yeah. and I never stopped. Yeah. And I just keep on going. Right. And after uh, I won officially, mm. uh, I was a Miss Singapore Globe. Mm. And then I stopped for a while, I got married. Mm. And after I got married, I came back for Mrs. Singapore. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, this page, it's this worm that is biting you, you know. Yeah. Like once you are a pageant girl, you will forever like to be in the pageant. Pageant, yeah. 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 Because I feel uh, pageant actually um, changes a person. Yeah. It brings the best out of... Uh, a person. Yeah, and I understand Angela, so it's interesting right? because you said that in the past, of mm -hmm. course, uh, mm -hmm. that's one way to get mm -hmm. talent scouted and then things of course have definitely changed now, yes. you know, with social media. Um, yeah. It's very easy to get talent spotted on mm -hmm. social media, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in your opinion, do you st still feel, you know, like how is beauty pageant now still relevant in this uh, era where, you know, there's social media and all that? Yes, of course. Mm. Um, with this social media, actually, it actually helps us help us a lot more to mm, get more mm, potential, mm. better quality uh, ladies. Uh, in mm. our days, we do a lot of um, competition, like we have to start from hits, semi-finals and yeah. then the finals. 
um, that's because we do not have social media to follow them. Yeah. But now it's different. We can follow these ladies from social media. We scout them mm. from the social media and then we invite them for the audition. Mm. And from that, it's finished. Yeah. And uh, we will get the cream of the crop mm. and then put them on the finals. Mm, mm, because mm. Uh, it's also about, the, the world is changing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not nice to kick people out yeah. of the competition and yeah. it actually demoralize the person. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's a closed door audition yeah. and then whether she got selected or not, oh, it's only between the organizers and her. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, so it's actually public, it's yeah. not so uh, hurt, hurtful at yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Again, for those of you who have just uh, recently joined us right here, uh, we are with uh, Mrs. Singapore Universe, uh, Mrs. Lee, as well as uh, the organizer for the beauty pageant, uh, that is uh, Ms. Angela Tay and uh, that sharing with us uh, the experience of uh, joining a pageant. But of course, uh, Mrs. Lee, we just want to get uh, to you as well. Uh, beyond this glitz and glamour, uh, of course, there is uh, something that you wanted to advocate as well and you wanted to use this as a platform. Yes. If you could share with us uh, on that. Mm. Yes, so I try, um, my main purpose of joining this pageant, of course, is to build up my own confidence and be a role model to little girls like my daughter. Mm. And uh, other than that, it's actually to advocate for my platform, the Angel Heart. It's, an, it's a non-profit organisation. They create burial gowns for babies who unfortunately don't make it home mm. and um, back in 2015 I miscarried I delivered a baby boy uh, after 30 hours of labor mm. but um, because it's um, well, it's in the second trimester he was fully mm. formed mm. I had to I had to deliver and then uh, cremate him yeah. and because there was nothing available commercially yeah. for him to be put in I basically just wrapped him up Yep. as suggested by the hospital yeah. and this is quite hurtful for a parent I feel yeah. so uh, just I coincidentally found this um, non-profit organization Angel Hearts and yeah. I thought this was really meaningful and something that I could resonate with at yeah. that time yeah. and I've been volunteering with them they they upcycle wedding gowns yeah. which I think it's something that that even if you don't need these gowns, yeah. if you could just you know use this and um, donate it to a better cause, yeah. I think it's it's a great it's something you can give to the society. Mm. Mm. And of course, uh, if uh, at the time when I thought, oh okay, I can do this and I can talk to I think I can talk to other women who have been through this, and yeah. it was very nice because it brings comfort to me and yeah. helps with my recovery process. Yeah. And at the same time, I was doing something meaningful. So I really encourage women who have had such experiences or if you haven't, if you really just want to do something for, for these babies or for the other mothers that you just want to lend a listening ear, you can also volunteer with Angel Hearts. Mm. Yes. Mm. So there you, he you heard it uh, straight from Mrs. Lee who's uh, volunteering with uh, Angel, Angel Hearts, Hearts. really. Yes. Uh, it's not just glitz and glamour with uh, the beauty pageant, it's also giving back to the society and uh, for uh, Mrs. Lee's case, of course, it came from a very personal uh, experience of hers. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Mrs. Thank Lee, for you. sharing that. Uh, maybe if we can just go back to uh, Angela. So, Angela, pretty sure you know you've seen um, a lot of contestants in the yeah. competition. You know, if you could tell us usually what makes a beauty queen. Okay, mm. it's not just about being beautiful and bold. Of course, brains dust comes in. Yeah. And then at the same time, you must have a compassionate heart mm. and ready to give back to the society. Mm. And the platform for uh, our company, we have built a platform for you. Yeah. It's for you to advocate, yeah. to inspire. Yeah. And then uh, I always believe in um, empowerment. Yeah, yeah, and we. I always tell uh, my beauty queens, our alumni, that um, women should help women. Mm. Yeah, women help women, and that is the something that I always believe in because uh, mm. we are all born differently. And I've seen many women from different walks of life, yep. and all women uh, wear many many hats. Yeah, yeah. So yep. sometimes it's really difficult to to juggle your life. Yep. You know, like uh, being uh, a mother. Mm and uh, a, a, a housewife, a wife, a daughter, everything. Yeah. We wear many different hats. Mm. So in our platform, we actually try to bring them out of their comfort zone yeah. and make them believe that they can do something that they have never done before. Mm. 
So that's it. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I do have a question. So, Mrs. Lee, when you uh, sorry, uh, Angela, when you saw Mrs. Lee, um, what made you decide that okay, she I want her in my pageant? <laughs> ah, because um, when she comes in, she um, was very, she has gave me the impression that I think that she is just cut for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I I don't know when I look at her. She came in with her child. Then I said, "Oh, you are so pretty. You should be in the pageant too." Mm -hmm. I think it's the height as well. Um, yeah, it does play <laughs> a part. But yeah. then again, um, there are many ladies who are not as tall as her. Mm. Yeah, are also my beauty queens. So yeah. some people, most of the ladies, they come in and ask them, "Why do you want to join the pageant?" Yeah. Oh, because I want to add spice in my life. Right. That's a very good answer, I said. Yeah. And we would definitely add a lot of spice in your life. <laughs> yes, and also, uh, bec uh, it's not just. Um, coming in and uh, we train you because we have a whole series of uh, activities mm. like from fundraising mm. we do fundraising we do bonding session mm. we go away we have mm. a bonding trip together mm. and then we have a makeover uh, session that make you look really from the before and after a lot of them a lot of them tell me they have lost themselves mm. so mm. when they come and join the pageant it's actually re self discovery right yeah right. Mm. and uh, feedback from my queens yeah. and past queens, yeah. and they always tell me life gets better every day yes after queen. joining uh, the pageant. Yes <laughs> <queen>. <laughs> That's right. So, Mrs. Lee, you know, just uh, on a final note, so what's next? Uh, you are going to be competing uh, on the international level. That's right. right. Tell us more about the uh, competition. Okay, so mm. I'll be representing Singapore in Guangzhou in mm. December this year. Yes. So, this is uh, one of the biggest. Uh, international pageants for married ladies mm. and we are expecting about 90 delegates from all around the world. Yes. I do want to bring the best of Singapore of course to showcase to the world mm. and so I've been doing some preparation work ma making myself of course to improve uh, to, uh, beyond what I am now. Yeah. Uh, of course, I have my cream maker here <laughs> to help me with that. Yeah. And I'm um, also talking to the past uh, past ladies who have represented Singapore and hoping to learn from them. I think uh, they are, um, them sharing their experiences would help me further myself and to prepare myself for the international pa pageant in Guangzhou this year. Mm. Well, certainly, wish you all the best for the competition. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Thank you so much. So there we have it. Uh, for those of you who have just recently joined us, we have uh, Mrs. Singapore Universe, uh, Mrs. Lee as well as the organizer. Uh, Ms. Angela Tay uh, in the studio uh, and of course uh, they shared with us uh, the pageantry experience uh, but really more importantly for Mrs. Lee it's not just about the glitz and glamour like we mentioned earlier on it's also uh, a platform for her to contribute back to society uh, and uh, this is uh, this comes from a very personal experience a very personal space uh, of hers and uh, she is uh, helping other women uh, who may have uh, faced uh, similar situations as her as well Mm. Mm. So once again, thank you so much, Mrs. Lee, thank and you. Uh, you know, for thank coming you. on to the thank show. You. Uh, you know, to just uh, spice things up for us as well, yes, right here. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Let's see, you. do we have any comments uh, right here? We have Samuel Wong that says, "Hello, beautiful people, and the beauty queen." Wow, <laughs> we have fans right there. Any other comments? I do. I can't really no, see. I, I yeah. saw the same one. Yeah. Same okay. One. So continue to you know just. Uh, Put in your comments, you mm. know, say hi, uh, anything at all, and let your friends and family members know that we are on live. That's mm. right. Now, moving on to our second segment. A week ago, there was an article on the New York Times. Uh, oh, no, my... Oh, your thing blackout. Yes. Okay, so a week ago, there was an article on the New York Times about how almost three dozen young people mm. were hospitali hospitalised for breathing and lung problems after vaping. Mm. And the young people had been vaping either nicotine or marijuana. To no. be clear... Yep. To be clear, uh, it's not proven <laughs> that the use of e-cigarettes and vapes cause them to have respiratory problems. But the link between most of the cases are that they are teenagers using e-cigarettes or vapes. Mm. Mm. So if you're not very sure what vaping is, well, essentially it's an electronic cigarette vaporizer that simulates smoking without the burning of tobacco. And the battery-powered device heats a liquid that contains the nicotine into a vapor which you then inhale. And the difference between uh, e-vaporizer and uh, e-cigarette is that unlike e-cigarettes, most of the e-vaporizers use a tank to hold the liquid rather than a cartridge. But you know, if you if you get to do it, I mean, you're still smoking. Lah. Yeah. Now, for those of you, of course, who are watching us, we have a question right there for you, right? What do you think 
about e-cigarettes, mm. right? It's an open-ended question, so let us know. Mm. Yeah, in the comment section below. Mm. Okay. Now, in Singapore, the importing and selling of e-vaporizer devices have been banned since 1993. Now, this includes e-cigars as well. And in February 2018, it is illegal in Singapore to buy, use or possess imitation tobacco products like e-vaporizers. Now, offenders face fines of up to $2,000. So if you're wondering, okay, guys, it's illegal, so why are you talking about vaping? That's because, hey, actually a lot of people in Singapore, they do vape illegally. Yeah. Uh, they smuggle it or whatever it is, but mm. so it still happens, right? Mm. So we thought that, you know, it's still a very good and timely topic to talk about because I think there's not a lot of information on yeah. e-vaporizers and the side effects. Yes, yeah. and of course, uh, we have a very, uh, we have a special guest. We do. On the show as well, you know, to talk about this. And with that, we would like to welcome our doctor, Dr. Steve. On to the show. Hello. Hello, Hi. doctor. Good evening. So you are a respiratory, did I say that right? Yes, right. Correct. Respiratory doctor from right. Mount Elizabeth Hospital. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, glad to be here. Okay, so we want to mm. ask, um, how does vaping compare to smoking traditional cigarettes? Yeah. Well, the traditional, traditional cigarette actually contains, besides nicotine, which mm. comes from the plant, it also contains about 2,000 other chemicals, of which 60 are known to cause cancer. Right. And when you vaporize them, you're inhaling them into your lungs. So you have lots of side effects from smoking. Mm -hmm. Now, the e-cigarette or the e-vapor basically contains nicotine, some flavoring and some additives inside. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have all the harmful components that are found in a cigarette. Mm -hmm. So some people think it's less um, harmful compared to a cigarette smoking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was created actually as a way to help smokers quit cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, use only these e-cigarettes and eventually stop smoking entirely. Right. So, so that was the plan, which was fine. Yeah. But what happens is that um, with as this new device, it's become a lifestyle. Mm. Mm. So rather than targeting smokers, now we have younger people who see it's cool, yeah. makes them happy, yeah. and it makes them popular because they're doing something that's new. Mm. And so it smells it, nice. Yes, and it can hide it because it has no vapor. So once you stop, uh, you, you stop turning on the vaporizer, yeah. there's no smell, you can hide it. Right, so right, you can hide right, from parents, right. you can hide it from teachers, yeah, yeah. or even from the authorities. Yeah. And we just want to uh, make known that we are not endorsing e-cigarettes. Huh? We are not, not endorsing <laughs> e-cigarettes or smoking or whatever. It's just really educational right now. <laughs> exactly. Right? We just want to make sure that do one little people say, hey, hang on with ST, say that e-cigarettes are actually the uh, can one. La, yeah, can, can, so at least say smell nice so she vapes. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> don't uh, fake news. Uh. Little puff ma will catch you. <laughs> so, Dr. Yang, um, yes. how many of your patients you see, how many of them, whether you mm. know? Okay. Uh, in the past, before this ban okay. happened, uh, there were foreigners that would, they showed me their vaping device. Yeah. And they were actually smokers and they were trying to quit. And they mm. showed me the device which looks like a cigarette. It's a little USB port, a micro mm. USB could charge it. Mm. And then when you smoke it, it's actually smoke that comes out. But mm. it's actually not cigarette smoke, it's like the vapour that comes mm. from the liquid being aerosolized. Mm. Mm. So I've seen a couple of patients who used it, but that was in the context of smoking cessation or trying to quit smoking. Right. They weren't using it as a lifestyle type mm. of right. uh, activity. So right. safe to say you have not had any patients with respiratory problems that resulted from using e vapes Yeah, fortunately not. I think in Singapore we are quite uh, obedient to the law and yeah. I think the law is in place to protect uh, the, all the people around. So yes, I've not yeah. seen people use it. Yeah. Mm. And uh, Doctor, now let's talk about you know whether uh, e-vapes or e cigs they are safer than right. smoking traditional cigarettes because that is often the conception. Mm. Misconception, conception, of right. uh, e-cigarettes. Okay. Yeah. So if you compare to cigarettes, of course, cigarettes are known to cause cancers in almost every part of your yeah. body, heart disease, stroke, uh, hypertension. And e-cigarettes relatively new in the market since 2003. Mm. So less data is known about the e-cigarettes. Yeah. So uh, proportionally, of course, they don't contain all the harmful chemicals found in the cigarette. Mm. So they are, in that sense, considered safer. Mm. But a few issues. One is that it still contains uh, chemicals which can cause cancer. Yeah. Um, it, especially when you aerosolize not just the liquid, yeah. they aerosolize the components inside as well. It could yep. be the plastics, it could be the metal heating elements, yep. and those are inhaled into your lungs. Mm. So for us who are very conscious about what we eat, we go to the supermarket, we look at the contents of it, mm. of, or even the chocolate, we see how many 20 chemicals yeah. are there. In the cigarette, we don't know what's inside. Yeah. Mm. And yet we are inhaling that, not even just ingesting it. Yeah. And that can cause problems. Mm. So imagine if you compare uh, cigarette smoking to 
uh, East frigates, it's like, it's like the risk is relative. Yeah. Imagine driving a car at 100 kilometers per hour yeah. with no seatbelt, definitely um, problematic. Yeah. So that's like smoking a cigarette. If you smoke East frigate, you're driving at 60 kilometers per hour without a seatbelt. Yeah. Is it safer? Yes, mm. but it's still unsafe. Mm. Mm. Right, right. So we'd rather yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, go that way. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So some of these uh, vaporizers, the liquids, right? They contain nicotine. Most of them do. Yes. Um, what are the side effects of nicotine? Well, nicotine gives you, um, uh, if you do it therapeutically, yeah. they give you, if you feel calm, make you feel less nervous. But there is a propensity to overdose. Unlike mm. nicotine patches or nicotine gums, there's mm. a fixed dosage of nicotine in these and they're helpful for patients who want to quit smoking. Mm. When you vape, you don't know how much nicotine is in that. And if you ingest it, you can get into what we call nicotine overdose. Mm. And there are usually two phases. Mm. The first phase is called the stimulatory. They become very excitable, ha fast heart rate, uh, they start sweating, they have um, high blood pressure, they, mm. they start salivating. Then there's the depression stage, which means your heart rate starts dropping, you become comatose, your breathing but slow, and some people can go into complete coma yeah. um, from nicotine overdose. Yeah. Mm. And Dr. Yang, we have a question here from uh, Samuel Wong. Mm. Uh, we know the effects of secondhand smoking, e uh, cigarette smoking. Right. But uh, Samuel is asking, what about the effects of inhaling the vape from those vaping in front of mm -hmm. us? Is right. that bad? So second hand vaping, vaping. vaping oh, smoke. Interesting yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, second hand smoke, we know, of course, has been linked to lots of uh, diseases, yeah. cancer, um, asthma exacerbations, infections, COPD. Now, in e-smoking, because the vapour that comes out still contains nicotine, mm. it still contains the aerosolized contents of, of the e-liquid, which is the vaporised liquid, uh, which comes from things like propylene glycol, glycerol, and these actually can cause problems. Mm. Um, in the recent study which was just published, um, they looked at what happens when people just had one episode of vaping and it affected blood uh, vessels. So what they did in the study was that they had patients who were normal, they put a little cuff around their leg and then they inflated the cuff so the blood flow to the leg is obstructed. Yep. Then they released it and then they did a scan to see the blood flow to see any drop in ox oxygen. So you had the normal people and people who vaped after just one dose, what happens is that the blood flow dropped there was lack of oxygen return. At the same time, the blood vessels did not dilate to their fullest as compared to normal people. Right. So what happens is that they propose that these components in the e circuit does affect vascular function. Mm -hmm. um, is it reversible in the long run? Possibly. But if you keep vaping more and more, yeah. the vessels will become affected. And how does it affect in patients? Once you have lack of blood flow or lack of oxygen, you increase your risk of heart disease, mm. stroke, um, mm. lack of oxygen supply to the kidneys, then you potentially can end up with some organ problems. Mm. So for that online article, uh, for that New York Times article, the teens who were hospitalised, they had severe lung problems. Right. Um, so how, how much do you think they would have to have smoked to reach that stage? Yeah, that's a good question because the, the amount of uh, smoking was still uncertain. That's why yeah. when you vape, you don't know how much you're absorbing or how yeah. much you're mm. breathing in. Yeah. And typically, of course, when you vape, you inhale, you want as much as possible. You hold your breath so as much gets into your system. And these components can cause an inflammation in the lungs. So it presents like an infection, mm. increased mucus production, maybe a bit of fever, a bit of coughing. Then it progresses to pretty bad lung injury after that. Mm. Mm. So is it a link between the vaping? I think they're, st they're still trying to figure that out. But they found them only in people who are vaping. So something's not right there. Mm. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, again, for those of you who have just recently joined us right here, we have uh, Dr. Steve Young, uh, who is uh, sharing with us, you know, the effects of uh, vaping and really the conceptions or misconceptions of vaping, right? Mm. Uh, whether it is safer than cigarettes. Again, we are. We just want to be clear that we are not endorsing uh, e-cigarettes or any form of e-cigarettes at all, right? This is purely for educational this purposes. This is pure, purely for educational uh, purposes. So we have another. Uh, suggestion here from Ron Liu that says do a one-to-one -one comparison with cigarette. Is that possible to do a one point, uh, one one there, yeah. comparison? Are yeah. there ongoing studies? Well, well when we do trials, mm. we understand what he's trying to do. He's trying yeah. to uh, suggest uh, comparing the harmful effects of cigarettes yeah. and harmful effects of um, e-cigarettes. The thing is when we do clinical trials, we want to institute a treatment which is beneficial to mm. patients. Mm. If you want to do a trial which we know can cause harm to the patient, um, we don't get much new data because there's so much evidence about the side effects and the harmful effects of smoking. Mm. It becomes a bit unethical yeah. mm. to 
give something you, you know will harm a patient yeah, right. and something yeah. that may harm a patient and something that are placebo doesn't harm the patient. Mm. It becomes a bit unethical. Mm. But to only tr prove the true effects, you need a trial of this sort. But it will probably not be conducted. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. No, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right, thank welcome. you, Dr. Lam, for you know, sharing with us uh, and, and coming on to the show mm. right, uh, to share with us uh, really the effects of uh, vaping. Again, for those of you who have any questions at all, uh, do still leave your questions uh, in uh, the comments uh, right there. Mm. Uh, and you know, if you have any suggestions or anything, yeah, just, just keep the conversation going as well. Because like what uh, Dr. Yang uh, mentioned earlier on, um, the studies uh, done on vaping uh, is not as extensive as uh, cigarettes, Correct. but that's also yes. because of uh, <coughs> cigarettes has, has been around for, for much Long longer time, time right. Right, yes. as compared mm. to vaping, which is considerably a new, new thing, a new, yeah. Yeah, a new fad or just a, a new phenomenon uh, right here. So yeah, just uh, keep uh, the conversation going uh, with regard to this. Once again, thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for coming oh, thank on you for inviting to me. the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in this week's feel-good story of the week, a story about determination and greed going against the odds. Now, he was told he would be wheelchair-bound for life after becoming partially paralysed from a fall. However, Singaporean rock climber Chua Chi Beng made a miraculous recovery by standing on his own again within two months. About four months later, he returned to rock climbing. Mm. So he had actually fractured his spine and his legs after he fell from a height of 7 metres mm. on August 8, 2017. So that's about almost two years, more than two years ago. He took up the challenge to climb a hill at Bukit Timah's Dairy Farm Nature Park. And he's not an amateur climber. He's a yeah. full-time rock climbing uh, instructor, in fact. Yeah. However, he plummeted to the ground when he ran out of climbing ropes. And he, he was brought to the hospital immediately. However, he had already suffered fractures on his mm. ankles and his heels. He also had a crack in his spine which damaged his spinal cord. Mm, exactly. Mm. And uh, he was paralysed waist down and was told that he needed to rely on a wheelchair for the rest of his life. But with the help of a physiotherapist, he trained to use his legs again. At the end of his two months stay at the hospital, he could walk again with a cane and four months later, he was actually able to do rock climbing. Yeah, and in fact, he's, mm. he's pledged to take part in a 50km fundraising charity walk called Let's Take a Walk this November. Mm. Now, he still walks with a limb. He hasn't quite fully recovered yet. Uh, but I think that's still amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. still amazing, yeah. It still but is, being right? Being told that you'll be paralysed and you'll be in a wheelchair for life, he's actually still walking. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we wish uh, Mr. Chua all the best uh, in his... Uh, you know, walk and of course, uh, speedy recovery, right? Hopefully mm. that, you know, he will recover further yeah. and be able to gain full function of his uh, lower limbs again. Yeah, if any of you are going for a physio right now, uh, we wish you all the best as well in your fight for recovery. Yes, and with that, on to our last segment, Facebook Face Off. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay there you go. so Renee mm -hmm. won last week. Yep. So I think I should continue her streak. Exactly. Her. So uh, for those of you who are new to Facebook Face Off, this is what we do. Ellie and I, we throw through our Facebook comments to check out the most wittiest, darnest comments uh, that people put on and then we go head to head with each other. Mm, so if you think Harun too is funny, you vote for him, you type H in the comment section. Yes, and if you think that Alyssa's comments are funnier, you type in A in the comment section. Mm. Okay, so Ellie, you go. Okay, I go first. Okay, so there's this story about how the dry spell Singapore has been experiencing mm. is likely to last for several months. Mm. Where's the story? Is it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Hold on, guys. It's coming out. Okay, basically, the total rainfall mm. recorded at in Changi was 92% below the long-term average. Oh okay, it's terrible. Look at that, terrible. Yeah. So, someone uh, with the name uh, Erwan, mm. this one is under the category of the darnest comments. Not even okay. witty, it's okay. just darnest, okay? <laughs> so, Erwan says, so dry, how is the island going to sink? Because, you know, this is in the context of the climate change, the National Day rally, about how you know, there are rising sea levels. So Irma was like, so Jai, how, how is the island going to sing? Like, you know. And, it's, you know, someone is making sure that I'm going to lose this week's Facebook face off. This, like, you know. What? I don't understand. No. Oh, because it's not happening, is it? Yeah, it's there, but it's very small because, oh. you know, people see, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and then Audi Khalid says, well, Irma, why don't you go to the beach and tell us if the sea is dry or wet? 
I don't, I don't get the thing. I don't get it. No, because it's like, it doesn't matter whether it's dry, rising sea levels will still submerge the island. Right. No, you're doing this on purpose, I'm not. You're doing this on purpose. I am not. 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 So I'm not. that the joke I'm is like not funny. No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, if you think that Alyssa is funny, type in A, okay? So I'm going to go with mine now. I will need to borrow your iPad. My iPad, I don't know what's wrong with it today, okay? This is about JJ Lin's first concert at the National Stadium. Will include two moving extension stages, which will bring the singer closer to fans. Okay, it's his first concert at National Stadium on December 21st. Justin Lee says, Carousel, prepare! You know, because there are a lot of all these tickets, black market, and all that. Oh, is it? <laughs> Oh, so if you think that Lisa's comment is funnier, you type in A. If you think Haruto is funnier, type in H. Okay, second round, I'll go. Now this is basically about FAS uh, saying that we have to be realistic about prospects. We're not aiming for the next 10 years, but set ourselves a 15-year horizon, said Mr. Tong. Now FAS is eyeing place at 2034 World Cup uh, and says that the goal is realistic. Canton Pei says, as always FAS, forget about soccer, be realistic. Nice. If you think yeah. Arito's joke was good, type in H. Okay. okay? Okay, let's go. Okay, so this one I chose. Okay, this one's quite yeah. mean-spirited, lah, maybe. Okay, anyway. So it's a jail time for mother and daughter pair who went shop who went on the shoplifting spree. Okay? So they okay. shoplifted. Okay. So Alexander Super Tramp, which I think is funny in itself, says a family that steals together. Stays together. Oh. <laughs> that is very funny. I feel very bad for okay. but, but you laugh yeah. so hard. Laugh if you so think hard. that Alice's comment is funnier, though inappropriate, type in A. <laughs> if you think Harito's joke was funnier, type in H, okay? Okay, third round, you go. Okay. So this I is the last round. I think we're going to lose our jobs <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you go. The last round. Mm. Marvel films to lose Spider-Man as Sony deal breaks down. Uh -huh. Aww, Aww, so sad. Okay. Tom Holland, I like Tom Holland. Okay. okay. Javel Lim says, well, it's, it's like homecoming, and then it's far from home, and then it's no more home to go to. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Jamal Ludin says, um, yeah, it's endgame with a different ending. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Right? Hey. Okay, mine. Uh, this is basically about a contest to test 20-hour non-stop flights to see if passengers can bear it. Soon Lee, with full enthusiasm, replies, do you need testers? I volunteer. I know, I know, okay. No, no, you I just want to escape. So you chose it because in your frame of mind, you're like, I want to get out of here. So you chose this. Yeah, you also yeah, want to volunteer exactly. for this. Like, <laughs> anyway, I understand so you. So if you think that Alyssa's comment is funny, you type in A. If you think Harriet is funny, type in H. Yeah, we'll let you guys, you know, mull over it and then uh, just... we'll see how it goes so far. Wow, a lot of A's uh, for oh, you. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm going to lose. Eh? Okay, so um, yeah. Chino Lee says, Have they discussed vaping? Yes, we have. Yeah, we um, have. To watch, I guess you can just watch the replay of this video. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and early on also, we actually spoke to a beauty queen, right? Mm. Uh, Mrs. Singapore Universe, uh, Mrs. Lee, together with the organiser. Uh, of course, you know, it is not just the glitz and glamour. Sure, you know, um, it's, it's nice to have a tiara and all that, but really, uh, Mrs. Lee also hopes uh, through that platform, she's able to give back to society, uh, angel hearts. Uh, and that is coming from a very personal space of hers as well. And then we mm. spoke to uh, Dr. Steve Young. Mm, Dr. Mm. Steve Young and Dr. Steve Young spoke to us about whether um, what, what are the health effects of using e-vaporizers and e-cigarettes and mm. also the harm... Um, <laughs> the side effects of nicotine. Yeah, and really, you know, we are not endorsing uh, vaping nope. or anything at all, right? Uh, we just want to... Uh, make it into edu ed ed educational edu because uh, yeah. there are people out there uh, may and maybe even you who are watching maybe you vape yeah you know whether conception misconception and all yeah. that so I guess it's something uh, good to learn mm. right okay by the way your mum vote for you yeah I, I know it's okay my dad your voted dad for voted for you, for you right yeah. <laughs> so I think it's all fair <laughs> right okay <laughs> with that five four three two one and the winner is okay I have to say though, this week, right? Okay, yeah. I have to say this. This week, I was really just caught like... Was a, it, was, it was not a good day. Like, I was rushing through to get to the comments. Yeah. <laughs> so, I wasn't at my best performance. I'm sorry, fans. Uh, but next week, I will come back stronger. <laughs> oh, you done? 
That is all we have for you this week. For more news and videos, do log on to our website. That is www.streetstamps.com. We're also on social media, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, uh, make sure that if you want to get in touch with us, uh, drop us a DM, follow us on Instagram, send us an email. Send, send us him anything, flowers, send me flowers. Anything, anything at all, right? If you want to chat with us, just yeah, drop us a slot in our DMs. All right. Mm. So once again, uh, we hope you guys have enjoyed this yes, week's yeah. uh, Hangout. <laughs> once again, she's Alyssa. And he's Arianto. Goodbye, Goodbye and see you next week. week.